What's up everyone, welcome back to Mel's Mountain Garage. What you're about to see is a year old video of me rebuilding a Yamaha FE290 single cylinder engine. It's out of my 2002 club car golf cart. The cart ended up breaking its generator oil pump, had no oil pressure, started rod knocking and seized up. So I bought a kit and rebuilt it. You'll see some of the trials and trilogies. It is running, it is done. Wait till you see the end of the video. Leave me the comments, hit me up with some questions. Appreciate it all, I'll get back as soon as I can. Thanks for watching. So the engine started making noise and then it seized up. So we've got Mater. Dad's got a hitch mounted cherry picker because broke back is broke, hence the name, and pulled the diff and engine out all one shit fest and that's fighting with the pressure washer now so we can clean it up get it apart take it apart rebuild kits 450 remanufactured engines 900 but you got to have a good core so we just try to see if it if it's got bearings if it doesn't have bearings it's aluminum saddles or what the deal is More to follow. See, it's a rod stud, but they look pretty good, actually. Continuing on with the golf cart, Dad got the transaxle out. Engines on his his one his other bench, and this will be a winter project. He's going to tear it apart and see where the noise is coming from. Dad tore most of it apart. Got the cylinder head and rocker cover off. I mean, valves are a little dirty, but they're not terrible. Pulled the clutch and everything off, so we've got the short block kind of sitting here. And this thing here was leaking oil like crazy, and I think that's kind of what led to it. A couple times, maybe went low in oil, but you can see these bolts are literally finger tight. This one, this one here shoot up here the only ones that are tight are this one here and this bolt here that's only because they fell completely out and i caught it and it was buried in the oil sludge so here this thing was leaking from the crankcase the entire time but it's since seized up so what we're going to do is pop it apart and see if it's the bearings the case bearings which i doubt it's most likely to ride on at a crank well took me and dad just a handful of minutes We've got the block apart. The rod, you can see the rod's all galled. Feels like a really awful record player. The crank's the same way on the outer surface and the rod surface. We pull the oil pump off and find the drive gear of the generator oil pump, the G to G rotor pump. It's broke. We're missing a part. So here it's been running around with no oil pressure, pumping metal through the motor. And that's what took it out. Yep. So the side, this is just a case. There's no bushing. That's the the aluminum housing is the bearing. It's got a little bit of galling. We'll just emery cloth it and, and mic it. Hopefully it'll be okay. Side cover bearing appears to be good. It's not crunchy or nothing. But we're going to need a crank rod. We'll put a piston in it. The cylinder looks good. The piston actually doesn't look terrible all in itself. I mean... All the more that it is, you know, there's not really a whole lot of wear. But in any case, the oil pump took a crap and it had a leak, and there was our problem. Parts finally arrived. Don't mind my voice, man. It's over Christmas. I've been yelling and shouting and hooting and hollering pretty loud. So we ordered some parts for the club car for the FE290 engine, FE290D, I think it is. And we ended up ordering a kit. I think it was from Small Engine Parts or something like that online. I don't recall what it was. Let's have a look here. And look, see. Oh, it's a, uh, yeah, Pat, Pat Small Engine Parts. So it was supposed to be a complete engine kit, crank rod, piston rings, 
gaskets. I don't really know what's all in it. I just wanted to crank and rod and piston rings in it, honestly, and some gaskets. We ordered a new G-Rotor oil pump separately and a oil level sender for the light, for the dummy light. I would like to add an oil pressure gauge to it, just so this way here, I'll know in the future. Having let, what, knowing whether or not I got high oil level or low oil level because the damn thing leaks is irrelevant if I don't have oil pressure. So, I mean, it'd probably go right up my ass if we actually had an oil pump. <laughs> oh, there's the piston. That's probably the crank. Right there. Yeah, there's our rod. Side cover bearing. All kinds of seals, gaskets. Oh, nice. Piston pin, oil pump side cover. Rocker cover. What the fuck that is? Oh, that's a pickup screen. All right, so we'll get all this laid out. It looks like we got, hopefully, everything I need to put it back together. Uh, Dad's not quite home yet. <clears throat> I'm going to steal his thunder a little bit and start tearing into the box and see what's here. Unpack the box. We got a brand new crankshaft with a uh, the rod for the counterweight. We got a new side case gasket, head gasket, oil pump gasket, connecting rod, piston, piston rings, wrist pin, side cover bearing. Rocker cover gasket, looks like two valve guide seals, the oil pump screen, the other case gasket, or maybe that's the case gasket, I don't know, I'll have to figure that out, and a handful of other gaskets, I don't quite know what they are, it just says gasket, oh here you go, it's a carb gasket, ah, it's funny because I've made them. And then another carb gasket, so there are two carb gaskets. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty inclusive kit. It looks like my spiral locks right there. Maybe the oil pickup or something like that. One of these O-rings, I'm pretty sure for that aluminum thing that holds the giant counterweight in. It's probably that one right there. This one right here. So yeah, I mean, it's pretty awesome. We do have the service manual here. So I can get the, the ring gap specs and figure out where everything goes, get the torque specs. So we'll be able to replace all this jacked up stuff. Dad don't like walking around on a big ass property, frankly, neither do I. So if we can get this running and have it run it for the winter, that'd be pretty awesome. No shooter that I shot that last little bit of video. Dad showed up. So he's working on a cylinder head. Putting new guide seals in. That's really all I think came with that. I uh, slapped the crank, the counterweight. The camshaft with the lifters or I guess you would call them lifters. Cam followers, whatever. That's what we call it, Then we gotta do the gonna do the bearing and the seal. I torque that rod bolt. The rod bolts. Ring packs on, the ring the rings were good out of the gate. It said five thousandths for the second ring, six thousandths for the first ring. And they were like fifty-eight and sixty-eight, so <clears throat> and a little word of advice if you do like we did and bought the Main Japan OE piston rings. Top rings the one with the shiny edge. Second rings the one with the red on it. And there's a little dinky R. You need a magnifying glass to see. And the R apparently goes up. Well, we're gonna put the side cover on. 
that is uh, a <laughs> huh? I'm recording. We uh, busted one of the dowels, getting the dowels out to hold the crankcase cover together. Rolls in that hole right there. Try not to hit yourself with a hammer either. Um, so he found a piece of brake line that seems to be the perfect diameter. We just want to use it. And it just locates it to ensure that the crankshaft and all is true with the other with the other bearing. Oh, you dropped the crap. Oil pump screens in, new camshafts in, side case bearing and seal, oil level sender. We'll slap that together, do the push rods and the cylinder head. We're gonna try and fire it up on a bench, I think. We got time. Oh yeah, we got time. Shit, it's not even. It's 5.30. Say, you know, hot tape no. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking after all that shit. <laughs> No. Yeah. It was a bottle was there, I think. I don't know, this is the beer. We'll see. Oh. I hope I didn't do that. Well, hopefully we didn't pour beer into it, but we just had it running. You get these fucking let's get both of these bottles out of here. Oh shit, dude. You should run on some once you kick it around. You ready? Go ahead. <laughs> it runs. I wanted to keep it idling. It is running. Dad and I are repurposing the England bottle. We don't have a fuel pump on it. <laughs> we had the uh, oil pump plate was leaking. It was all hammered from the last one, so I beat it straight. Seems to be okay. It's idling at 30 fans of oil pressure. So I, I guess that's good. We're just gonna try and get it to warm up. Oh no, I think it's a success. Though we do have a crankshaft issue I gotta talk about, but that'll be in the, in the scheme of this video, it'll be in, in 30 seconds. But it runs, and it runs, it runs damn good. It's got a ton of compression too, so. Keen eyed viewers may have noticed that that crankshaft is wrong. And what's wrong about it? Well, it's supposed to have a tapered shaft. The drive clutch on that, it's a, it's a torque converter, right? That's a whole torque converter, clutch, torque converter. Uh, kind of an oversized version of a Comet 30 like you'd find on a go-kart or a mini bike. Uh, the difference between those is one, this is freaking huge, and two, it's tapered, so you need a taper shaft crank, just like a, any horizontal shaft, small engine on a generator. Oftentimes they are tapered shaft; uh, they aren't straight cut. This this is a straight shaft. This crank that I bought is a straight shaft with a keyway, and I didn't. It wasn't specified. I didn't notice it until I put it all together, and then I realized, oh crap, this is the wrong freaking crank. So. After I had it running, it was good to go. I got online, did some research. They made tapered adapters, which required cutting the crankshaft two inches or so off the crankshaft and 
drilling a hole and left hand threading it. So I had to buy a left hand thread tap, drill the hole, tap it, cut it. It worked out fine, not for the faint of heart. Uh, you can buy the correct crankshaft. The part number is there. They are still made, but they are very expensive and the crankshaft would have cost more than the kit that I bought to rebuild the entire motor. Uh, I have the ability and the facilities and the tools to do it, so fortunately it worked out for me. Got our new oil pump plate. In that plate, we got a left hand tap. So you have to cut the crank. We put our tapered adapter on for the clutch. We got our little rubber shoes for the driven clutch. And we have lightweight drive clutch weights for the drive clutch. We also got a high torque belt. So we'd be able to button all that up, mount everything to the bracket, and it'll be good as new. Driven clutch, new rubbers or plastics. Had to drill two of those out. And we got a yellow high torque spring. compressed get that snap ring on springs a lot stiffer use the vise two sockets got a snap ring in there driven clutch is good with the driven clutch done I'm gonna do the drive clutch I thought they were lightweight weights they look the same freaking size to me but it doesn't matter these ones got some wear on them these ones are new. I did one. I'll clean all that rust out of there when I get the new ones in. And then that bit will be done. And we'll go to the oil pump. These guys here are two weights with a pin. You got a little bearing with a little wave washer in there and these two nylon washers. And the fact that it's a clutch, you can't load this up with any C's or grease or none of that other shit because it'll just it'll just all gum up so you just got to get it in there clean and dry i'll put a little wd-40 in there just till we get it running and then that'll just wear off well i think it's going to be safe to call that video a wrap this video here right now has been a bit so the card's been running for months now i have modified the timing when I put that engine together, I advanced it four or five, six degrees, jetted up the carburetor a little bit. The car does 26, maybe 28 mile an hour and bounces off the mechanical governor, but all in all, it runs incredible. You can see it's filthy. I'm missing the fuse panel cover. You can see stone up in there from burnouts and rolls and all kinds of extra stuff. So this car gets plenty of use for sure. Let's get her fired up. See, you got great oil pressure. I want to say if you watched that whole video, thank you. I really appreciate it. If this is your first time on this channel, please hit the like and subscribe. Leave me some comments, ask me some questions. I'm usually pretty good at getting back. If you're returning, thanks for coming back to Mel's Mountain Garage. Also, hit that like and subscribe. Until next time, until the next project, make it easy.